I think we should take a few steps back and think mm. about the history and how how it got started. We know that our area most of the time has been plagued with war, with uh, kind of you know different peoples coming Control and going, my, yeah. you know yeah. all, all that stuff. And some might think that the dance itself might be a result of these multiple cultures kind of uh, um, colluding together or just clashing together. And others might think no, it's the Oriental dance, actually, well, not Oriental dance, uh, La Danse Oriental. <laughs> yeah, Oriental, <laughs> Oriental dance. Let's That's call it Oriental, call it. Oriental, Oriental dance. dance. Oriental <laughs> dance is actually a product of the region itself without any other kind of uh, influence. So how did it start? From my perspective, and historically speaking, it's very difficult to find a pure line of any type of movement base because that is the common thread in humanity. Languages are different depending on the area that a person is from. And you see like you have languages that borrow the alphabet and languages that have completely different alphabets. We have a completely different alphabet than other um, places in the world. But like English and French, we yes. have the same alphabet, right? Same letters, yeah. Yeah, right. same letters. But movement, we all have the same body. We all have the same body. So the body moves in certain ways and we all have the same abilities. So no matter how we look at dance, they all borrow from each other. It's very difficult to find an absolute clear line. So if you wanted to argue, for example, that ballet is French because the terminology of ballet in all countries, irrespective, is actually French. Mm. And the reason why it's French is because the Sun King, Louis XIV, he developed the first school and wrote the first book. And so that's, that's why it's true. French. Mm. But he, but France is not the first people to make ballet because at the same time the Russians were making ballet, the British were making, I mean, the English Saxons were making ballet. And it was, there were similarities in them. So to say that this kind of dancing belongs exclusively to Lebanon, for example, or exclusively to the region, to the Levant, yeah. could be a little bit difficult when you look at things like we were talking about. Flamenco. The Flamenco. Right, yeah. exactly. And the influence of the Arab uh, exactly. culture in and Spain. Yeah. Right, so you, you, and their influence on us. Also. Remember, mm. Latin Mafi, there's not a one-way exchange. Right in any type of situation, That's it's true. it it it's a give and take. Even in the colonizing manner, there's always a back and forth. Right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, something as simple as religion. In order to get people of the time to accept a new religion, what would they do? They would adopt the previous the previous levels ideologies. So pagan uh, worshippers they kept their same fe feasting times. And they implemented them in the current religion that's so that people... Yeah, yeah. That's what Christmas, right? Exactly. So Jesus wasn't born during that time <laughs> on Christmas. <laughs> Not at it all. was just an actual pagan ritual. Exactly. And people kind of bestowed upon. Exactly. Same thing with Islam, right? The Kaaba itself was a place of worship and people decided to... Right. And, you know. and, and as we build on them, that's what happens. So the exactly. same thing happens in dance. Um, but we do has, have exclusive things to us. Uh, for example, the fact that it is a very um, sensual dance that is normally done only by women. That is something that is exclusive to this kind of dance, which maybe it shouldn't be. And historically speaking, wasn't really. But somehow, mm -hmm, yeah. as history moved us forward, it became that. But it wasn't that. It was a sensual way to move. And whether it was men moving or women moving, it was all acceptable. But then when the divides became more clear and women were excluded from the men and men were excluded from the women, um, you found the dancing happening within those areas and they didn't really share them. So you're talking but about Islamic the, extremism, sorry. Yeah, yeah. right. I, because we were, we were uh, wondering where we were, where <laughs> we were preparing this, uh, this episode that in our culture, we don't have couple dance like yes. the vals or the salsa or the tango. Yes. We don't have, we have uh, the, um, 
de, de jama, yani de, 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 yeah, de, de group, group the group dance yes. like the dabke, right. and you have the oriental right. dance that it exclusive to women alone, dancing alone. But we don't have this had. kind of traditional dance as a couple, so it's very weird. So it's uh, it's a kind of uh, this um, what yeah. are you talking well, about, Janet? So, social dancing, which is what dabke is. Yeah, Dabke it's a social, is our social yeah. dance. That's how we present ourselves in festive in festivities. Yes, it's folklore. something we do socially. Mm, yeah. um, social dance actually was the same as our social dance all over the world, which it was formations in shapes with bodies. So it was a line dancing, circle dancing, hand holding. Like the sikhtaki in Greece. Exactly. Yeah. This Everyone had the same thing. But the ballroom dancing which became mm. then social dancing, was an aristoc aristocratic thing. When they wanted to stop being so social and make themselves more exclusive, okay. and it came from the upper class in Europe. Wow. But the couples dancing came from the streets in the Latin regions. Yeah. Where you have, the, because there's the discussion of whether you have Latin dance and, and ballroom dance and you know mm. the people who are experts in this and I'm not one but mm. I have friends who are and I listen to their arguments all the time about you know ballroom Latin has nothing to do with ballroom Latin is a different kind you know because you have the snobism that comes in a good way I don't mean this negatively the snobism the exclusivity of the ballroom dancing where has the vals the the foxtrot the Tango, and then you've got the cha cha, the salsa. salsa, you know, and this all the heavy. So, some of that sensuality that comes with the Latin dance is not in the ballroom dance. The ballroom dance, it's more of a like really an elite thing, you know, you barely touch, and then it's a courtship, the right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like a without, without being courtship. too, it's a beautiful yeah. courtship. Mm -hmm. You can see maybe in the movements, they're a bit more like grandiose, right. they're not as fast. It's it's more of yeah, right, it's and a even the way even, yeah. even the way that they touch, and then the hips don't it's ever touch. Very minimalist, touch. right? Right, exactly. Okay. And the hips don't ever touch, and there's not that movement in the hips like you see in the dirty dancing, if we want to say of yes. the um, Latin, which is beautiful. The high, there you go. There <laughs> it is. There it is. So um, these crossovers—that's what I like to call them—or fusion, as in music, because there's always mm. that the type of you know, because again, you're a good music person, right? And you understand. Maybe I was a DJ. Yeah. yeah, and so you understand the the uh, small little intricacies of what makes it different from an Oriental beat to an exactly. Occidental yeah. beat, right? Yeah. But you can have these crossover, and you can see the influences that happen, right, from from the different styles. So um, what we know is that it was it was a dance that became structured for harems yeah so it was a a very sexual sensual i want to say sensual more than sexual but sensual type of dancing that they did to entertain each other to start with really it was women so between women each other? yes yeah women entertaining ah, okay. each other and it was kind of like a um a like a battle of who's the prettiest and who can be the most alluring and who can attract the and being you know, the favorite yes exactly the and suitor. how did they the suitor and become the favorite and at the time eunuchs would take care of the women in the harem yes so eunuchs are men that have no castration balls. right yeah. they yeah. have like been castrated, castrated. So, true okay, wow. yeah so that's how the man the male element became a part of it because they were together all the time and okay. they were learning and teaching and doing and moving and that's how the male element became a part of it. So it wasn't exclusive to females, but... It just had men without balls. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, for lack like, for exactly. like of for saying it a better <laughs> way, yeah, it was, that was it. Or, or more or less, men that wouldn't be attracted to them. There you go. You yeah. know, so they would be safe, I guess, um, is what the thought process was. Okay. But that, that is, um, there wasn't an exclusive clause to, to females. But you know, like, 
nowadays people say 